during sunday school a teacher told the children about the pharisee and the tax collector praying in the temple which is found in luke 18 and uh, she said that the pharisee prayed god i thank you that i'm not like other men robbers evil doers adulterers or even like this tax collector who is in the temple while the tax collector prayed god have mercy on me a sinner the teacher explained how the pious self righteous attitude of the pharisee caused him to look down on the tax collector at the end of the class she asked one little boy to close in prayer and this little boy prayed god i thank you that i'm not like that pharisee in luke 18 you know we are naturally proud <laughs> we are naturally self righteous but such an attitude displeases god god opposes the proud though god's people are saved their sinful nature remains in them when we fail to live according to god's word we look more like the world we will reflect the attitudes of the sinful world when we live our, in our own flesh you can't distinguish whether a person is a believer or an unbeliever until you reveal your name if you have a christian name of course people cannot distinguish whether you're a believer or not or until you mention that you go to a church you know people will not distinguish that the passage that we are going to meditate on for the next few weeks shows the kind of attitude or attitudes that God's people must possess would you take God's word and turn your Bibles with me to Matthew 5 verses 1 to 12 Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 12 seeing the crowds Jesus went upon the mountain and when he sat down his disciples came to him and he opened his mouth and taught them saying blessed are the poor in spirit for this is the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be satisfied blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see god blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of god blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake for this is the kingdom of heaven blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you i've entitled today's sermon as blessed are the poor in spirit we are going to look at the first beatitude and this is the first sermon in the eight sermon series on the beatitudes and i have entitled this series as be different tell your neighbor be different amen be different so this is going to be uh, we are going to meditate this passage over the over eight long weeks well according to tradition apostle matthew wrote this gospel if you read the gospel of matthew nowhere do you see matthew or anybody claiming that i wrote this gospel even the heading that you see in the gospel of matthew is written by the translators it is supplied by the translators so we don't know who wrote it but according to tradition it is apostle matthew who wrote this gospel in the 50s or 60s ad matthew presents jesus as israel's messiah the gospel of matthew contains miracles as well as major blocks of christ teaching matthew's gospel is a teaching gospel for instance some of the major blocks of christ teachings are the sermon on the mount from chapters 5 to 7 you see a major chunk of teaching there then in chapter 10 we read about jesus's instructions to his disciples in chapter 13 we find the parables of the kingdom 
in chapters 18 to 20 again we find several teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ in chapters 24 to 25 Jesus was on Mount of Olives and he gives a discourse which is known as the Olivet discourse he teaches you know God's word to his people and today's part today's passage is part of the Sermon on the Mount the passage that we read Matthew 5 1 to 12 is part of the Sermon on the Mount which is found in chapters 5 to 7 Sermon on the Mount is often called the Constitution of the Kingdom many scholars believe that this sermon was preached for a few hours I mean, if you read Matthew chapters 5 to 7 probably you can read the entire passage within 15 minutes but many believe that Jesus probably preached this sermon for a few hours or even probably for a few days on the mountain to his disciples and others although this is probably the most well-known sermon in all religious literature John Stott says that this is the least obeyed sermon as well when you read the Sermon on the Mount you can find a parallel in Luke's gospel Luke chapter 6 verses 17 to 49 is often known as the Sermon on the Plain what Matthew 5 has is the Sermon on the Mount 5 to 7 has a Sermon on the Mount and then Luke tells us that Jesus preached on a plain in Luke 6 17 to 49 we find that when you read both these sermons there are few similarities and there are few differences as well some say that Luke's reference to a plain in Luke 6 means a level place meaning probably somewhere in the hills there was a level place and then Jesus you know preached the Sermon on the Mount so in that sense the Sermon on the Mount and the Sermon on the Plains is the same and the place is also the same so when Jesus uh, Matthew is saying Sermon on the Mount he, Jesus climbed a mountain yes he was on a mountain and he preached but when Luke mentioned Plains it basically means a level place so probably he preached on a level place on some mountains now Matthew and Luke may be narrating Jesus' teachings in different contexts as well some say it's the same sermon put in different ways but some some also believe that since Jesus was also an evangelist many evangelists repeat their sermons so it is possible that Jesus preached you know Matthew is recording Jesus' sermon which he preached in a different context and Luke is ref recording Jesus' sermon that he preached in a different context Jesus probably used the same material for preaching on more than one occasion now as we all are aware the Sermon on the Mount contains the Beatitudes which we are going to meditate on for the next eight weeks and the Sermon on the Mount also contains the Lord's Prayer which we meditated on last year in Matthew chapters 5 to 7 Jesus teaches how a citizen of his kingdom should be these instructions reveal how God's people must live under his rule although the ideals mentioned in the Beatitudes seem to be impossible they're not given for mere theory they're not just given to make us feel good about you know all these teachings yes we are imperfect yes but Jesus expects all his disciples and not just a select few holy people by the way he expects all his disciples to live by these ethics not just in the coming kingdom but during the present age if we live according to Christ's instructions that we have read, read just now we will be like the salt of the earth and the light of the world which verses 13 to 16 mention in today's passage we see that Jesus teaches that the poor in spirit are blessed and he declares that the kingdom of heaven belongs to the poor in the spirit this morning since we are beginning of this series let me let me first of all explain the meaning of the term blessed what is the meaning of the term blessed what is the meaning of the term blessed let me 
before again explain uh, what the term blessed mean let, let me briefly put things in context Matthew chapter 5 verse 1 says seeing the crowds Jesus went up on the mountain and when he sat down his disciples came to him in the if we can have the next slide in 2013 almost 10 years back I had the privilege to go to a 20th century church that is believed to be located on this mountain that we have read just now and and I read the Beatitudes aloud at that place next this is close to Sea of Galilee next please this is so too close to Sea of Galilee we, we had a group and we read the Beatitudes and prayed there next slide please and the Sea of Galilee is right next to this particular uh, mountain. The light is off, please. Please look at that. The crowds, Jesus, I mean, Matthew records about the crowds. He says, seeing the crowds. The crowds are the people referred to in Matthew 4, 23 to 25. And the Bible says, seeing the crowds, Jesus went upon the mountain and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And here the term disciples seems to be a larger group than the 12 disciples. So disciples mean doesn't mean just the 12, probably there were others also who came and heard this sermon. Some scholars see similarities between Moses giving the law on a mountain, Mount Sinai, and Jesus giving these kingdom ethics on a mountain the new law is also given on a mountain in the old testament moses gave the law and here on this mountain jesus gives us a new law in those days jewish teachers sat while teaching and that's why you know jesus also often sat while teaching today you know in our teaching context we stand and do that but in those days they sat and taught and then the people would sit at the feet of you know the rabbi and listen to the teaching now let us uh, dwell briefly on the meaning of the word blessed the Greek word for blessed is makarios makarios the beatitudes are also known as makarisms from the Greek word makarios of course and where did we get this word beatitudes beatitudes come from comes from the latin word beatus which basically means blessed or happy beatus if we live according to god's values we will be truly joyful and happy amen but many believe that these terms happy or blessed are inadequate in explaining the meaning of makarios to be blessed is to receive God's favor. To be blessed is to receive God's endorsement. To be blessed is to receive God's approval. To be blessed is to receive God's congratulations. In other words, God is saying congratulations on living a life which pleases me. These beatitudes are not totally new. We find such beatitudes in the Old Testament as well. We find these beatitudes in the New Testament as well. Any example in the Old Testament? Blessed is the man who does not walk in the way of sinners, not stands in the seat of, uh, not sit, sits in the seat of scoffers, not stands in the way of sinner, sinners, and so on. Blessed is the man whose sins are forgiven. Right. So we have these beatitudes in the Old Testament, and we have these beatitudes in the New Testament as well. In these eight beatitudes in Matthew five. The first four beatitudes relate to God and the next four relate to people. Unfortunately, we don't see God's people live ac living according to these beatitudes. That's why there is hardly any difference between the worldly people and several Christians. But God wants us to be different. He wants us to be different. Even in the Old Testament, God expected his people to remain distinct from the nations around them. He called them to be holy. And as I mentioned in the last week, holy basically means you're, you know, God is distinct and he wants his people also to be distinct. 
he wants us to be separate from the rest of the world and of course he wants us to be pure as well we must know church that these be attitudes are totally counter culture if you go and talk about these be attitudes to a person who is not born again they will mock them and that's all right because the world doesn't understand you know biblical values and the kingdom ethics all these be attitudes are be attitudes are totally counter cultural it seems foolish to live this way but we are blessed if we live this way and we will receive our reward if we live according to these ethics we must not be conformed to this world we must remember that since the kingdom of god is already inaugurated through the coming of jesus the blessings mentioned in this beatitudes are both present and future when the bible says you are blessed it's not that we are going to be blessed sometime in the future but we are blessed even now praise the lord because kingdom of god is already inaugurated however what we enjoy is only a glimpse of these blessings on this earth and we will experience these blessings that the beatitudes mention in full measure when the kingdom of god fully comes further we must note that we cannot live according to these beatitudes in our own flesh you and i cannot on our own ensure that we are poor in spirit we cannot mourn in our own strength we cannot rejoice when we are persecuted in our own strength we need to depend on the holy spirit to live according to the standards of kingdom ethics hallelujah with that understanding of the term blessed let's move on to the next lesson that god has for us god opposes those who are proud and self sufficient god opposes those who are proud and self sufficient you know we see that in the bible over and over again when you read matthew chapter 5 verse 20 when i i remember when i was reading this as a young person in my youth in my teens and i wondered you know what it means because jesus says for i tell you unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and pharisees you will never enter the kingdom of heaven i mean pharisees were very holy in those days they followed the law to a t they were very very zealous when it came to following the law and jesus says your righteousness must exceed their righteousness here jesus also talks about scribes and scribes were basically made copies of scripture in those days they wrote down scripture so the scribes basically copied scripture by their hand and since they were familiar with the old testament law they were they were considered uh, to be experts on the law and these scribes even taught the law that's why in niv scribes actually the original word is scribes in niv it says teachers of the law it's kind of an interpretation of what scribes mean because they taught the law the scribes and pharisees were zealous for the law and strived to follow it but jesus says that our righteousness must exceed theirs now this doesn't mean that we have to follow the law better than them that's not what the lord is saying rather it means that we must possess the righteousness that christ graciously gives to those who realize their sins and repent of them you know the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees is self righteousness self earned they try to earn righteousness but what jesus is saying is you got to have the righteousness that i give to you that god gives to you that is the kind of righteousness that you need to possess and we can be righteous in that sense only when we repent of our sins and confess our sins before god the pharisees as we know practice righteous deeds so that they can be seen by people we see that in matthew 6 1 to 3 and jesus rebukes such a self righteous attitude in luke 18 9 to 14 let's uh, turn our bibles there i referred to that earlier in the introduction luke 
9 to 14 you can look at the self righteous attitude of a pharisee luke 18 9 to 14 jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves okay these people trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt two men went up into the temple to pray one a pharisee and the other a tax collector the pharisees were you know like very spiritual people in those days they were like priests in those days and the tax collectors were like you know they they were considered to be traitors because they minted money from their own people and the pharisee verse 11 standing by himself prayed thus god i thank you that i'm not like other men extortioners unjust adulterers or even like this tax collector i twice fast i fast twice a week rather i give tithes of all that i get you look at that attitude you look at that attitude he's actually not praying to god he's praying to himself he's boasting about his righteousness before god and what does jesus say in verse 14 I tell you this man that is a tax collector went down to his out justified rather than the other for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled but the one who humbles himself will be exalted so God opposes the proud and the self-righteous James chapter 4 verse 6 says God op opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble so that's the biblical principle that we find i mean before we look into the importance of the beatitude that we are meditating on this morning we got to understand why you know jesus is saying that the poor in spirit are blessed god opposes the proud and the self-sufficient totally and finally and this is where my focus is going to be for the next several minutes God favors those who are poor in spirit. Hallelujah. God favors those who are poor in spirit. So let's meditate our text in depth. Before that verse 2 says, And Jesus opened his mouth and taught them saying. I mean, Matthew could have said Jesus taught them saying, right? But why does he say Jesus opened his mouth and taught them? You know, the phrase opened his mouth indicates the solemnity of Christ's words. It indicates that Jesus' words are very precious, they're very holy. We find this phrase opened his mouth in the Old Testament and New Testament also for that matter. So it's not a redundancy. It's not, you know, Matthew is not using these words just like that. By the way, Jesus often taught through his example when his mouth was closed still verbal teaching was an important aspect of his ministry even we must teach through words and actions we cannot do without the other i mean we cannot say i'll only teach through words and not through actions at the same time we cannot say i'm only going to teach through actions and let people see my life and learn the gospel no we got to teach through our words as well the phrase taught them saying in Greek it's in the imperfect tense that is past continuous tense and some suggest that the essence of what Jesus often taught in his teachings is found in the Sermon on the Mount in other words he whatever he taught in the Sermon on, on the Mount was taught in different places the same essence was taught in different places and 5 3 says Matthew 5 3 blessed are the poor in spirit for this is the kingdom of heaven when you read the ending of Matthew 5 verse 3 and verse 10 they are similar it says for this is the kingdom of heaven it is actually a literary device which is known as inclusio meaning you know it's kind of a paragraph and uh, this phrase for this is the kingdom of heaven frames the section on the Beatitudes when you read the parallel passage in Luke Luke simply says blessed are the poor that's it it doesn't include the phrase in spirit he says blessed are the poor 
why is luke saying that luke is probably referring to the godly people who disregard worldly riches and remain voluntarily poor or probably the circumstances don't allow them to become rich and they're content in being rich in god that's why he says blessed are the poor the greek word for poor in matthew 5 3 and luke 6 20 is tokos tokos i mean there are two greek words for poor but the word tokos basically means abject poverty the same word is used for lazarus in luke chapter 16 verse 20 he was a beggar that's how we got to be the bible says tokos abject poverty blessed are those who are in abject poverty when it comes to their you know spiritual poverty in the old testament the word poor of course refers to the economically poor but this word poor is not restricted to the economically poor because we know the poor can also be proud right yes they can be so it's not that all the poor people are going to heaven no 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 that's not what the lord is saying when you read the old testament this term was also used to refer to a godly person who hopes and depends on god alone because of his economic struggles or because of his social struggles that's how this word came to be used in the old testament and some see par some parallels between the beatitudes and isaiah 61 1 to 11 when you have time go back and read isaiah 61 1 to 11 and you can find a lot of parallels similarities between beatitudes and isaiah 61 remember jesus quotes isaiah 61 verses 1 to 2 the spirit of the lord is upon me and so on to preach the good news to the poor he quotes that in luke 4 18 to 19 also some believe that the beatitude blessed are the poor in spirit is an indirect reference to isaiah 66 verses 1 to 2 listen to what isaiah 66 2 says for but this is the one to whom i look oh this is something we need to know whom does god look up to this is the one to whom i look he who is humble and contrite in spirit and trembles at my word these are the people who are poor in spirit when you read psalm 34 verse 6 david writes this poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles now is david talking about his economic poverty not so much not so much he was talking about his poor condition he's desperate he's helpless that's what he is referring to so poverty in spirit is not just about you not having enough riches but it is a posture of humility this is in contrast to the self-sufficient and spiritually proud people which we talked about earlier the poor in spirit are needy they are oppressed they are helpless and afflicted the poor in spirit are those who recognize that they need God and thus completely put their hope in God. They don't depend on their self-righteousness. They are utterly dependent on God's grace and mercy. Elsewhere Jesus preaches repentance as a requirement for entering into God's kingdom. You cannot enter into God's kingdom without repenting of your sins. So it's obvious that the poor in spirit have admitted their spiritual poverty and repented of their sins. Some of, your, some of you are familiar with the message translation. I was first introduced to the message translation. I believe in 2004 when our president of SABC back then, Dr. Ivan Setavrata, read these beatitudes from the message. Here's how Eugene Peterson translates Matthew 5 3. He says, You're blessed when you're at the end of your rope. With less of you, there is more of God and His role. Hallelujah. That's what, you know, Lord Jesus Christ is telling us.
we must acknowledge our spiritual poverty before god even those who are materially prosperous by the way can acknowledge their spiritually poverty spiritual poverty you may have riches but you can still say lord i'm poor before you i'm nothing i'm nothing even we must acknowledge that we are sinners we must acknowledge that we don't deserve to receive anything from god we must come to god empty handed not with our merit lord i fasted lord i gave my tithes lord i did this lord i did that no lord i come to you empty handed those who think that they're righteous cannot receive salvation but at the same time you know always like to keep adding these caveats because sometimes we tend to take some teachings to the extremes now all this doesn't mean that you have to hate yourself that's not what the lord is saying you and i are precious in god's sight but what it means is what blessed in uh, what poor in spirit means is that we are completely empty before god we are poor before god we don't have any of our righteousness we don't have any of our merit to show to god and say lord i'm good salvation is a free and gracious gift from god augustus top laddy uh, wrote in his hymn rock of ages nothing in my hands i bring simply to the cross i cling naked come to thee for dress helpless look to thee for grace foul i to the fountain fly wash me savior or i die that's the kind of attitude with which we need come we need to come to god nothing in my hands i bring simply to the cross i cling it is when we come to the end of our rope that god displays his power listen to what apostle paul says in second corinthians 12:9 if you can look at the bible said second corinthians 12:9 Apostle Paul says that Jesus said to me my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in what weakness not in my strength not in my strength not in his strength his power is made perfect in weakness therefore i will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of christ may rest upon me hallelujah that's what we got to do we got to admit that we are weak and the world keeps saying you are good you have to have self confidence you are the best and what not but the bible says we must acknowledge that we are nothing we are nothing before god we need to come to god with an empty hand as we read luke 18:9 to 14 you know this fantasy was praying to himself he was his own god he was boasting about his spirituality and all his good deeds but look at the attitude of the tax collector in verse 13 but the tax collector standing far off he was not even you know wanting come close to the temple because he knew he was a sinner he would not even lift up his eyes to heaven but he beat his breast saying god be merciful to me a sinner that's how poor in the spirit look like we don't have anything to bring before god we he just said lord i am a sinner be merciful to me and who went home justified it was a tax collector not the pharisee that's the kind of attitude that you and i ought to have church are we poor in spirit or are we self sufficient and proud and boastful if we are poor in spirit we will pray more because we know that we cannot do anything without god a proud person will not pray that there's no need for prayer if we are poor in spirit we will pray more if we are poor in spirit we will fast and see god's face because we know that things will not happen unless we fast and seek god's face it shows our dependency fasting basically shows our dependency on god 
if we are poor in spirit we will depend on god in everything that we do whether it's your household work or your office work or your business or ministry you will depend on god lord i cannot do anything in my own strength i need you lord if we are poor in spirit we will be always grateful to god because we realize that all that we have is undeserved and we have received all that we have received only because of god's rich grace and mercy hallelujah that's what poor in spirit do if we are poor in spirit we will be humble we will not have any tendency of pride within us because we know we are nothing before god we are nothing without god we come empty handed before god so there's no room for boasting jesus goes on to say in verse 3 for theirs is the kingdom of heaven for theirs is the kingdom of heaven you know in greek the word theirs is emphatic it can be literate, literally translated as for theirs alone is the kingdom of heaven <laughs> hallelujah only those who are poor in spirit will enter god's kingdom in other words god's kingdom is not for those who are proud and arrogant the kingdom of god belongs to those who realize their spiritual bankruptcy So this morning let's ask the Lord to help us realize our spiritual poverty without God now we only deserve hell nothing more nothing else but God is in his rich mercy and grace has sent his son for us he was crucified for our sins and he is willing to save us we are nothing nothing without god the bible says that god favors those who are poor in spirit so this morning the sent time message has to be summarized in one sentence this is the word of the lord for us recognize your desperate need for god and completely depend on him recognize your desperate need for god and completely depend on him do you think that you desperately need god well if you feel that you desperately need god you will be not you will not be casual when it comes to things of god you'll be earnest in seeking god you'll be passionate in depending on god in leaning on god in looking to him we sinful humans think that we don't need god we can do without god god is just confined to a sunday morning religion god is not a genie who is limited to sunday morning blessings no we cannot do without we cannot do anything without him have you realized your spiritual poverty have you repented of your sins and given your life to jesus if you haven't repent of your spiritual bankruptcy and surrender your life to jesus today he will save you and when you become poor in spirit you will become truly rich hallelujah and let me remind you church that jesus modeled such spiritual poverty though jesus is fully god he came to this earth as a human and he utterly dependent depended on his father look if you will at john chapter 5 verse 19 please john 5 19 so jesus said to them truly truly i say to you the son 
can do nothing of his own accord but only what he sees the father doing for whatever the father does that the son does likewise even the lord jesus was not detached from the father he completely leaned on the father for everything jesus exemplified what he preached so church let's stop being proud and self sufficient let's grow spiritually by becoming poor in spirit one of the marks of christian maturity is being poor in spirit mature people don't boast about their spirituality immature people do let's not be righteous in our own eyes as the lord jesus goes on to say in the same sermon on the mount and he says you know look at the speck log in your own eye instead of looking at the speck of other eyes in other words let's examine our own self we are not called to you know examine others lives it's up to them and they are answerable to god let's examine our own lives let's not be righteous in our own eyes in everything we do let's depend on god let's trust him and lean on him this morning let's tell our master lord i need you every moment of my life i need you i desperately need you i cannot do without you i'm helpless before you helpless like a baby that's why jesus says unless you become like a little child you cannot enter into god's kingdom this morning let's recognize recognize our desperate need for god and completely depend on him blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven amen, amen. shall we all stand to our feet and look to the lord in prayer